email list, your Twitter followers, your Facebook, your Facebook group, your Instagram, wherever your audience is, so that every time you post, you have a chance to get reactions. We've all seen things on our Facebook feed that have gone viral, and we've read them and looked at them and gone, this is terrible. It doesn't matter. If they can get that distribution, that's all that matters on the internet. One in five good posts is all you need, is what people will remember. The reason I say this is people are like, oh, I don't think that post is good enough. I don't know if people will like it. You just have to get it out there. Like at Planet Ivy, we were getting one million visitors a month, but we could honestly never say when something would go viral. All we knew is that something would. So we produced 15 to 20 <laughs> articles a day, and one of them would take off. So we had no idea. Um, the way we paid writers was based on page views, and honestly, it was kind of an unfair system. Uh, some kid would write something about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and it would get 200,000 page views, and someone would take a month to research a journalistic piece, and it would get 500 views. So no one knows what will go viral. So you have to put a lot in to see one of them take off. Also, once you have one in five good posts, people will say that person's a good blogger or I love their video content, and they'll just ignore your bad posts. Copy until you develop your own style. Uh, real simple, uh, there's a very steep learning curve to creating content. So once you copy and you get that good feeling of getting those likes and those comments, it will encourage you to write a lot more. Never say no to public appearances if you're building a personal brand. This is essential because basically everything good that happened in my life in the last year and a half has been from public speaking. Uh, all the clients I get, all the new friends I make when I'm touring America, um, it all comes off the back of doing that one thing that gets you in front of a lot of people and they have to listen to you. It's a massive difference between this and networking. You know how it is when you're networking, you're working around the room and then you meet someone and they're like, oh, I work in finance, and you're like, ah, oh, okay. And then you have to speak to them for 10 minutes, and you're like, oh yeah, very nice. Um, <laughs> it's awful, but um, when you're a public speaker, people have to listen to you. They have to stay quiet, and you have the whole room's ear. Um, there's one way you can segue the two, and that's what I call the uh, Ariana Huffington technique. I heard a while back this is what she used to do. So uh, when you open the floor for Q&A, um, you start by saying, this is my name and this is my company, and you kind of pitch so the whole room knows what you do, and then you ask your question. So like, when I was running Planet Ivy, uh, like the editor of BuzzFeed was giving a talk in this arena of about 300 people, and I put my hand up and I went, I run Planet Ivy, an online magazine for young people. We only have a million visitors a month. How do we get to five? So the whole room knows that uh, I'm running a massive website, and when I walked out, uh, people from big companies wanted to talk to me. That's a classic technique in order to get people's attention. Scale worldwide as soon as possible. Once you're doing public speaking, um, find other places to give those talks. Uh, use the internet because satellite cities across England and America are very, very similar. Be vulnerable. Say what people are really feeling. Um, everyone wants to be business guy, but that kind of sucks. Everyone is the same if that's the case. You want to say, our industry is corrupt. Our industry is broken. Here's how we're trying to fix it. That will make you stand out. If you look at any of the posts that uh, stand out in an industry, it's always the one where people uh, lift the kimono and show what's going on. Uh, the best article written on the music industry this year is an expose of Victory Records. Victory Records was an independent record label that had massive emo bands like Taking Back Sunday um, and Aiden and a few others on it. And it was an expose on how corrupt the music industry is, uh, a terrible boss on one of the record labels, an amazing like 10,000 word read, and went super viral. Um, so you have to say what's going wrong in order for people to really take note. Essentials, your personal Facebook needs to be your public professional Facebook. Uh, I say this because a thousand true fans is all you need to make it. So if you have a thousand true fans who will pay you a hundred dollars over the course of a year, and it's not that much, maybe a couple of ebooks or seeing you live three or four times, then you make a hundred thousand dollars in a year. You need those first a thousand true fans. Once you have those, you can guarantee that you will not fail when you launch something. And if you have those a thousand friends on Facebook, then they get to interact with you every day. You get to build a relationship with you until you launch something. So even if it's something super technical, like in the finance or analytics niche, if you have a lot of people connected with you on Facebook, when you launch something, you have their attention. Um, the reason this is important is because everyone from the top CEO to the youngest intern is on Facebook all day. No one escapes it. 
This is the place to go if you want to get people's attention. Uh, 1.7 billion users right now. Twitter is your public network. Typically when you Google anyone, Twitter is the first result if they don't have their name.com. So Twitter is the first thing they're going to click on when someone looks at you. So if you have 48 followers and you haven't sent a tweet in three months, uh, that looks horrible. It's very easy to scale up uh, on platforms like Twitter. It's very easy to send out content and to look relevant. LinkedIn is your professional network. Again, it's easy to scale up because people need your connections as much as you need theirs. So people are very likely to accept connections. Also, um, if anyone in this room doesn't have an email list, uh, you can export all of your emails from LinkedIn. So make a note to do this and you instantly have an email list overnight that you can use tomorrow. New platforms. Uh, Medium is great for text. Uh, it picks up massively on search engine optimization. So unless you have an SEO guy, it's probably better to put your blog on Medium rather than your own site. Keep uh, text on your own site as well, like duplicate it, but Medium is amazing at getting uh, eyeballs. Uh, Instagram and Tumblr if you do a lot of pictures, and Periscope, Meerkat, Snapchat if you do video. There's a conspiracy among social media marketers like me, and it's a good one. We'll tell you the way to be good at social media is to post great content consistently with a strong voice. Uh, we tell you that because you try it, you don't get any followers, you don't get any clicks, and then you hire us and pay us lots of money. It's a great racket. Um, but that's not how you grow. You grow your social media by being aggressive. Follow lots of people, reach out to lots of people, like people's posts, reply to people, ask for shout outs. Whatever platform you're trying to grow, don't even bother with a content strategy until you have at least 3,000 followers on it. It is a complete waste of time. You will not get enough likes and shares. You may as well spend your time doing something else. People don't care about you and they definitely don't care about your product. So if you're posting office selfies or alcohol Fridays, literally no one cares. Are you going to say something controversial? Sometimes it goes down well. Sometimes uh, people get offended. Um, if you're not good looking, no pictures of the founding team. <laughs> it's just not nice content for everyone else. You want content that will make people feel good. Uh, so if they look at you and they don't feel good, then that's bad. So how do you do that? Um, if you're not good looking, then post lots of videos, quotes, pictures, interviews. Things that will make people feel good. Now it's very hard to come up with that content originally every day. So my advice is to steal it. This is something I brought across from Facebook to Twitter. I was the first one to get it, and because of that, loads of people shared it, and my name started to trend in London and Melbourne, Australia. So I got loads of new followers for something I didn't create, but it still felt good. Uh, this is another classic. Not a lot of people know, the only people left using Twitter are unemployed people. So they wait for a famous person to tweet, and they want to get that first snarky response. So if anyone remembers when TalkTalk, Talk, that company with famously bad customer service, got hacked a little while back, the newsreader tweeted, breaking, TalkTalk Talk has received a ransom demand. And the first reply was, it could be hanging on for hours for a response if it's TalkTalk. Talk. <laughs> so I screen grabbed that, 50 retweets instantly, and really, really easy to do. If you don't know where to find viral content, this is welcome to the internet. The best page on Facebook, they constantly scour the web for stuff that's likely to get likes and shares. Pretty much always brand safe, so any company can use this. This is Razit.com, this is a viral content aggregator. So this will scrape the web for everything that's going viral right now. So you just tap in your niche, so racing, finance, fashion, uh, gorillas, whatever it is, and it will find everything that's trending right now uh, across Facebook, Twitter, and you can put wherever you want links, pictures, or text. So this is your one-stop shop at the start of the day. Go here, see what's trending, put it on your social channels, and go about your day. This is Snipply. This is another way of getting extra traffic in emails. When you share a link, not just to your own site, but to BuzzFeed or Wall Street Journal or whatever, it injects a pop-up in the bottom left corner. And with this, you can put an ad to your website or you can start collecting emails from here. So you can start getting extra clicks even if you're not sending them to your own site. Instagram is the best place to find new users and customers right now. What you want to do on day one is find the one user who absolutely loves what you're doing. Follow all of their followers then look at the hashtags those followers use and start using them in your own posts. 
The reason for this is, when everyone sees that you follow them and they look on your profile and you have the right pictures and you have the right hashtags, your follow back rate is going to go up astronomically. Follow, like, like, like is the best strategy for it. So this is when you manually sit there and you follow someone who's in your niche and you like three of their photos. This really increases the number of people who look back and are much more likely to follow you. Um, even doing this manually with your hands, you should get about 5,000 followers a week if you do this properly and you have your target market sorted. Instagram traffic. Instagram traffic shows up as direct on Google Analytics, which is the worst sort of traffic because it's very muddy. Direct traffic is everything from an app on your phone, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. Anyone browsing privately, anyone clicking from an untagged email. So it's this big mess. So what you want to do is, if you have a link on your Instagram, let's say you want it to your homepage, don't put it to your homepage. Create a dummy page, like yourdomain.com forward slash go, even if it looks the same as your homepage, and send the traffic to that. Then you know that every person who hits that page has come from Instagram. Uh, so you will put in your pictures, click the link in our bio for more information, and then send them to that page. Then you can measure whether your Instagram is actually bringing traffic. As far as I'm concerned, the whole point of social media is to get traffic to your website, is to collect emails. Memes are the easiest way of making people smile. Everyone from kids to grandmothers can all enjoy meme content. This is one of my favorites. This lady has her dog in the front seat and husband in the back. Everyone can enjoy that. It's something very relatable. My dream, a pretty girl. My reality, a fat cat. Everyone has been there, you know? So let's say your niche is food. You could just type into Google food meme and take the top 20 and you instantly have content that your niche is going to enjoy. So when you're trying to eat your roommate's food without them noticing, cut a very thin slice. Me before dinner versus me after dinner with Kim Kardashian pregnant there. Single, taken, hungry. Now food fans will appreciate this because food fans get hungry. That moment when you find the perfect avocado at the supermarket. We've all been there. Hey man, you need to slow down on all the carbs. <laughs> me, why? This is one of the fattest dogs in the history of the internet. He's just completely given up. <laughs> Me before and after I eat dinner. Look how cute that one is. So when you put these things in your feed, people naturally feel good and will naturally hit like and will naturally want to comment and start to tag their friends. Yeah? What if it's a luxury business? I mean, that's not a very like, luxurious post. The name is, it kind of signals low quality, doesn't it? If you, if you Google luxury meme, um, I think you'd find things like, uh, I'm not going out drinking tonight, I'm too busy uh, you know, following my dreams. You know, it would look a lot classy, it would be a guy standing in front of a big car. I mean, what I'm saying is, for example, Greg Goose Vodka wouldn't post like memes on their Facebook page to get that. I don't know, a, a lot of the big brands have post memes. They tend to create them rather than use other people's photos. But um, they do, they, they catch on to memes and they tend to use them. Uh, great, but again, Grey Goose would probably have a quote about uh, an inspiring life rather than a picture of a cat. But they would still use the exact same formula. Uh, so a meme doesn't necessarily mean fun, it doesn't necessarily mean animal. Meme basically means an in-joke uh, within a group of people. So. Uh, the meme amongst uh, people who are chasing money is that cars is good, uh, houses is good, partying is bad. So those would be the memes that tap into that. Um, Smirnoff's bizarrely is drink responsibly um, because they have to, but then they put that next to people going absolutely crazy on a rager. So their memes are about who's looking forward to the weekend, who doesn't want to go back to work. It's still a meme and they would have professional photography in there. But um, you need something that people can understand in seconds. That's what I mean is. This is the anatomy of a good Instagram post. So this is Founder Magazine. They went from zero to 110,000 followers in a very short amount of time. So they have a picture of uh, Cecil the Lion here. They slapped an inspirational quote on it. True leaders work for peace, given a tiny credit. And what they've done over here is the most interesting part. Not a lot of people know you can reply to your own Instagram post and drop in up to 30 hashtags, as long as you do it in the first 10 minutes, and all of these will rank. 
So they've done everything from businesswoman, desire, happiness, motivational. So they don't seem like they have any congruency, but they know that they will rank for two or three of them if they throw that many in. So this was a major um, way that they got a lot of traction very quickly. They also grew very quickly by getting shout outs from big influencers in the space. This is really key if you're trying to grow quickly. So audience is the way you can find influencers for any keyword on earth. It has a free plan. You just sign in and you say what's the keyword that's going to be in their bio and how many followers am I trying to reach. So we find between 50,000 to 100,000 is a good sweet spot. Uh, not many people are chasing those dollars. Everyone over 100,000 tends to get swamped with responses or is signed to a big agency or is $500 a post. So you would type in here fashion if that was your niche. It would be 50,000 to 100,000 and then you would search through and you could export this on the paid plan and go through all of them and reach out to them via DM and a picture comment to get them to give you a shout out. Regramming is another way of growing an account quickly. You find all the pictures that are getting a lot of likes in your niche and you ask people if you can regram them, that's repost them to your own profile. Most people will say yes because you promised to give them a shout out and there's a vanity thing there. And then they will start to regram you back using your hashtag. People will start to follow the hashtag and will start to follow back. The guy who created this was taking pictures of beaches in southwest Wales and unbelievably he got a thousand followers in two weeks and this was all he did, just regram a few photos. But this is a good way of getting traction if you don't have money to spend to grow your Instagram. Use Canva.com if you're not a designer and you want to create great looking posts or flyers. So it's really nice software that will automatically resize your Facebook image or your Pinterest uh, long image. So really, really great if you want to create beautiful fonts really easily. You can use Hootsuite, Buffergram or Later.com to schedule your Instagram posts so you don't have to physically be there every time making them live. And you can use Webster.me to help find hashtags. And I think a product that looks cool is good for Instagram, so uh, technology, personal brand, and they're looking to get thousands of users. Facebook is undeniably one of the best things that has ever happened to us in our lives. It's a way of reaching millions of people, and it still has a lot of ways that you can reach a person for free. Um, for every 100 people who say, a platform is dead or a tactic doesn't work, there's always one or two who could do it for free. Uh, so you'll probably know that if you build a Facebook page, only 2% of people will likely see your posts uh, unless you pay them. So it's very, very hard to game a Facebook page, but this is why I'm a big fan of building a personal brand. Build your own uh, image, your own personal <laughs> profile. Personal profile has better page rank than a, a page, so your post will naturally reach people who generally interact with you. Um, add me on Facebook, Vincent.Dignan. Um, I have loads and loads of Facebook groups that have hundreds of thousands of people in, and they're the easiest way of getting to your target market. Uh, don't drop links in other people's groups, because Facebook will ban you after a few, but you could certainly start to drop value and method posts. And this is, if you want to make $100,000, um, the easiest way to do it is Diana here, my friend. Um, so she's a classic example of how to do this. Build a Facebook group around an area of expertise. Uh, so put out good content every day, and once people understand you as an oracle and people uh, are into what you're doing, then you start a coaching program. It's a private coaching for the people in that niche who want to get higher. And 5% to 10% of people who follow you will buy everything you put out. So the easiest way to start a coaching business, charge someone, say, $1,000 a month for coaching, um, you can easily get 10 clients of the 500 you have in your group and then you have $100,000 a year business. This is a massively growing niche. Uh, there are 20 million millionaires in America right now. In 2020, there will be 40 million. Um, and I think a massive chunk of those is going to be coaches. Everyone needs to be coached. It's a service a lot of people need. Um, so by building your personal profile out, you have a great um, way you can lean on a platform for free um, that can bring you a hell of a lot of money. This is my Facebook group, Traffic and Copy. So I do posts about how to get free traffic to your website. Uh, my co-founder, Charlie, does posts about copy. Uh, in the first three months, we got over 7,500 people in the group. Uh, we now have people in the group who have 100,000 followers on Facebook. Uh, we have massive engagement. Um, it's a really fast-growing group. Um, and some of the things we did to make sure it's a good group is we stopped people doing external links. 
Um, we stop people spamming links to their blog, uh, and we just show up every day. I do two to three posts every day, normally a how-to post. Uh, how to grow your Facebook overnight, how to great, create a great Facebook post, uh, how to do selling easy enough. So you've got to be showing up every day on Facebook if you want to make a difference, posting two to three times. So traffic and copy, if you find it on Facebook and you uh, ask to go in, um, everyone in here will get in. So you can grow your own Facebook group in one hour, right now. Uh, I think Facebook are going to cut this off soon, um, so this is maybe the last six months you can do this. When you invite someone to like your Facebook page, they can say yes or no if they even see it. However, if you invite someone into a Facebook group, they are in it, they then have to opt out. So it's, as long as you put good content in that and the people are somewhat relevant, you're going to have a thousand people in it in the first day if you and your co-founder both have 500 friends and invite them in in the first day. You can also invite up to 500 people a day once the group's going by email as well. So you can get a hell of a lot of people in the group very quickly through inviting, which means that you're off to a flying start. Um, so this is an incredibly strong strategy if you have no money to grow and you want to grow a small engaged network. This is how Facebook chooses what to show in your newsfeed. So firstly, interest. How interesting are you? Somewhat. Do people generally like, share, and comment on your post? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes is not good enough. You need to get likes, shares, and comments on every post. The more likes, shares, and comments you get, the more Facebook will show your post to other people. So having dead posts is not good enough. You have to experiment, find the things that work, and then carry on doing those. Secondly, the type of post you do. Live video will get shown to the most people. I'm doing live video right now, hello. Um, after that, video, below that, text and photo, finally, external link. If you take only one thing from this program, Facebook hates external links. It will show your post with external links to the least possible people. Do an experiment in the next few days or weeks, uh, do some external links and some pictures and text, and see which one gets more engagement, or look at your past posts. Generally speaking, you will get twice the engagement if you do not put a link in the post. So you want to be building your uh, page rank through text and photo and video, and then only when you have something to sell or a major announcement, then is the perfect time to put a link in. But generally speaking, avoid putting links. Uh, when people say that everyone puts links, yes, and no one is getting anything out of Facebook. Um, only the people who really understand it are growing the big businesses at the back of it. So avoid external links. So don't link people to the blog post. Copy and paste the blog post and put it in as a text post. Facebook likes long text posts, they show, because Facebook wants to be a blogging platform. It wants to take over Tumblr, that's why it took the GIFs off. It wants to take over Medium, that's why it invented Facebook Notes. Facebook wants to be the only place you go to browse the internet. So as soon as you take someone off Facebook, it hates you. And its business model is for you to pay them so those links get seen. Recency is the area you have the most control over. You want to get everyone in your office to like, share and comment in the first 10 minutes. Have you ever noticed when it's been a baby or a wedding, it's glued to the top of your feed because a lot of people like, share, and comment to that very quickly. So if you get everyone in your office to do that, it will show it to more people. So Facebook shows your post to a few people who follow you, and then if they get like, share, and comments, it shows it to a few more, and a few more, and a few more, until a video hits 10 million. So generally speaking, your content needs to be as good as a baby or a wedding. You need to learn how to do Facebook page. Uh, if you work with someone else, they will definitely be using it. And if you do your own thing, then you will need to use it as your company grows. So custom audience is the most uh, significant way of doing this if you're on a budget. Custom audience is everyone who's given you their email on your website. You can plug that into Facebook and only show ads to those people. They've shown they're somewhat interested in what you're doing. Now you convert them. Twitter used to be my favorite social network. Um, it changed its algorithm recently, and now uh, Facebook is. But Twitter is still an amazing way of growing your profile, reaching people, doing B2B sales, and generally speaking, an easy way of getting traffic to your site. So don't worry about hashtags. No one uses them, unlike on Instagram. Twitter's not about mountains of traffic like Facebook is. Twitter is about finding one or two people every day who love what you're doing, reaching out to them, and then converting them to sales. Audience is the best Twitter tool of all time. You can look up anyone on Twitter. So let's say your niche is musicians. You would just type that in, and it would pull all of those people, and then you can plan to reach out to them, export it to an Excel on the paid plan, 
basically, it's a big list of customers you have easy access to for free. One of the golden rules of the internet, people generally follow back. So using something like Tweepy, you can load up your competitors' followers and then start following them. And now, this isn't the best way of doing it, but this is like a starter level. About one in 10 should follow you back. So at a basic level, get your intern to do this and you'll start to get followers every day. Don't follow more than 50 to 100 people a day for the first month on both Twitter and Instagram, 100 to 200 a day for the second month, and 200 to 300 a day for the third month, and unfollow the people who don't follow you back. Um, never follow more than 600 people a day. Uh, on Instagram, the odd thing is you're meant to follow people until you're following 7,000 and then start unfollowing. Twitter basics, steal the good stuff, only retweet compliments. Tweet the same article at least five times a day. No one's looking at your Twitter. If a tweet is not seen in the first 15 minutes, it will likely never be seen. Pictures most likely to be retweeted, so always increase those. And tweeting 50 to 100 times a day is fine. When we were running 10 magazines, we were tweeting 300 times a day per account. 5% of people would unfollow us. The other 95% were clicking tens of thousands of things, and it was a big value add for our agency. Uh, anyone who is running a content-led business, Twitter is fantastic for. So the easiest way to get a content empire going, write lots of content and then send lots of tweets. And then that is traffic. You want to increase the traffic between today and tomorrow, line up loads of tweets tomorrow and watch the traffic to your website increase on analytics. Anyone looking to reach a certain job title location um, is great for Twitter. And events businesses. I hijacked the South by Southwest hashtag last year. Uh, we were helping an app launch from Iceland and we put on a party and got Simeon Mobile Disco to DJ and I was the entire marketing team. So we presumed everyone using the South by Southwest hashtag would be at South by. So we were replying to everyone using the hashtag saying retweet this for guest list, VIP entry, free food, free drinks to our party. Um, we eventually got the official South by Southwest to retweet us. Um, and we had 1,700 people through the door on the night, one of the biggest parties um, at South by Southwest, and this was the only marketing we did, just four of us on laptops replying to people. So it was a really, really fantastic night, and it's great to bring growth hacking into the real world. Um, and this was part of the reason that on this 100-day world tour, I'm not speaking to five people a night where I turn up somewhere that I've never been before, like Austin, Texas. Um, by tweeting at people who are interested in what I'm doing, getting them to follow me, beginning conversations. Every town I go to, I have people waiting there for me. So if you're doing public speaking, Twitter's amazing to bring people through. This is fame bit. If you're looking for YouTube influencers, you just tap in, um, this is my niche. So I'm looking for someone to talk about my fashion line. My budget is $400, and then they bid for it, and then you can see who has the most engagement and who you want to work with. LinkedIn is another good place to cross-post your blog posts. So if you go on Pulse and you email Pulse and ask to be featured, there's a good chance they'll feature you and then your post will reach a hell of a lot of people. I give this talk around the world and there's two types of people. The first is like, I have an app idea and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, so what? And the second is like, I have an app idea and it has 500 users. And I'm like, now you have my attention. The reason is it shows hustle, it shows spirit. It's a big difference between those two numbers. So when you're trying to hire someone, when you're trying to get a co-founder, when you're trying to get an investor, having 500 uh, is a big number when most people who start companies have zero. So anyone in this room can get 500. If you can't, then go and do another job. There's plenty of them out there. So message all of your LinkedIn contacts in batches of 20. Individually message all your Facebook friends as a private message. And the first message of that needs to be, a, can I ask you something? Not, here's my link. You have to get them to reply to that. If they don't reply to the can I ask you something, um, they're not going to click the link. Um, tweet all your Twitter followers one by one and email all of your contacts one by one. Business is hard. Every day you have to ask people to do things they don't know they want to do. So if you cannot do this by asking your friends and family, the people who love you the most, it's going to be very difficult to be successful in business. So start by hustling small and grow with time. New platforms, uh, Periscope and Snapchat, great if you're good looking. Um, I see a lot of businesses trying to use Snapchat. What exactly are they snapping? Here's me at a laptop, now I'm eating donuts. There ain't anything to snap, and you can't click through from Snapchat uh, unless you get a big following and then you get them to click the direct message. So Snapchat does have high engagement, but it's really only useful for personal brands and restaurants and bars where you can 
text people and tweet people and send them live Snapchats come through for two for one. Uh, WhatsApp, if you can live with yourself, has a very high pickup rate, but people will hate you. You need to write 25 headlines for every piece of content.